Okay. So earlier this year, um, I hit a point in my uh, finances that was very uncomfortable to say the least. I had I always had confidence. I worked for myself, so I, and I had always had this confidence that I could make money no matter what. If if things were dipping, um, I'm an artist, and I, I could I could make something. I could contact some old clients, especially with Facebook. I could uh, you know put something up that I've made, and I could sell it. I I never felt this ceiling to what I was capable of of making. Uh, but I'll tell you, earlier this year, um, the earlier months. Nothing I was doing was working, it seemed. Uh, jobs were being cancelled. Just the oddest things were happening, and my finances were dipping more and more mm -hmm. into my overdraft. <clears throat> and where I had, you know, <clears throat> been there before, but I could pop back out, I was in a very uncomfortable position and was continuing there. Um, so I contacted Dorothy in April, <coughs> and I asked for some advice and some scriptures, and she led me to... Keith Moore's um, Prosperity Proven. Mm -hmm. And she also told me, number one, get the fear out. Number two, get to the hearing part. And I started just um, listening to Keith Moore's um, teachings over and over again. It's quite a long series. It's fantastic. And he has a, a great way of just simplifying it, too, to the point where you're saying, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich, rich, rich. And I was doing that around the house. <laughs> I had Elliot saying it. <laughs> and whenever that fear would prop up, crop up, I... You know, it replaced it with um, all the beautiful things that we can say uh, that God has given us, right? I'm beautiful. I am wealthy. I am happy. I'm joyful. I am at peace. I am provided for. I am rich. I am rich. I am rich, rich, rich. And God had also led me to Psalms. And I actually felt that he was telling me to paint the Psalms. Uh, I am a painter. Um, and I, I did a couple of paintings while I was listening to the Psalms. And so um, that was interesting as well uh, to have the images come out. Um, but I got caught in Psalm 1. That was where I sort of stayed for a while. And I just had loved that, you know, blessed is who, he who delights in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he, he meditates day and night. He is planted like he is a tree, like a tree planted near streams of living water, which yields fruit and harvest, and his leaves never wither, and all that he does prospers. We see that in, in Dorothy's bathroom, that painting, and that I just memorized that over and over, and I was meditating on that over and over again. And the other one was Second Corinthians nine eight, and God is able to make all grace abound, yeah. right, to you, so that in all things, at all times. Having all that you need, uh, you will abound in every good thing, mm -hmm. good work. And so I kept meditating on those. Um, and so this went on for a few months. Um, and uh, I, re I, I, I have to, I pay HST, right? So I calculate it quarterly. And I'm hoping this is not too long, but. Um, so every three months, I am uh, calculating my income and my expenses and calculating the HST that I, uh, that I pay when I buy something and that I receive when someone buys something from me, right? And so that's what I remit. So every three months, I'm tracking my income and, and expenses. And then, uh, so I started to look at, so in October, then I was doing um, uh, July. July, August, September. So I was, so that was the period of time where I was really into um, Keith's word, Dorothy's word, and and hearing uh, lots of different teachings um, about, you know, God's provision. And I calculated my income for those three months, and I was excited. And I looked back at January, February, March. And I also looked at the expenses, right? Because if my expenses are higher in, in the, th the last three months, and as well as my income, then that's not okay, right? I mean, the net is going to be just the same. But I looked back and my expenses for the first quarter and the second quarter was the same as the third quarter. So my expenses had stayed the same. 
but my income for the first quarter went from like 9300 and then the second quarter was 8600 so I was starting to get scared, right? My third quarter was $19,000. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes, so nine nine nineteen thousand, yeah. And then, so I continued, right? And um, so during that third quarter, we had also started talking about tithing. And I was becoming more diligent about that and recognizing the importance of being regular with that. And I had also heard from Jesse Duplantis. I had also heard from Kenneth Copeland. So it is funny when you're seeking a, an answer, right? Mm -hmm. That's coming at you from different places. And so in November, I received a call from a long-term care facility. I do a lot of work, uh, mural work in long-term care facilities for patients with Alzheimer's and dementia. I've got some pictures if you want to see later. Um, and I had done work for them 12 years ago. And so they're calling me back. And the recreation uh, director said, um, yeah, there's a number of places we want you to paint. Can you come and see? And then she started sending me pictures because they had a, you know, they had an issue there. Um, they didn't want me right away. She sent me pictures. And I said, so do you have a budget that you want to share with me? And, and they're not always willing to share with me. They just want to see what my price is going to be first. Well, I'll tell you, there was, it was like there were no barriers to what she wanted to say to me. It's like she, she just trusted. She said, I don't care what it costs. We have $100,000 to spend by the end of the year. Wow. <laughs> who, who says that? Wow. Right? Who says that? Now, so that, you know, that obviously she trusted me though. And, but boy, my integrity <laughs> was really being tested there because I wanted to be fair, obviously, right? Um, I'm not going to take that whole hundred thousand as much as that would be wonderful. <laughs> but so I started to, um, so I, I did contact Dorothy and I said, this is what she said to me. It's, I'm excited. But again, I want, I want to be, I, I, I want to have integrity. Yeah. And she said, just pray. Pray and see what God and the Holy Spirit wants you to charge, but also pray, and I hadn't ever thought of this before, and see what the Holy Spirit wants you to paint. Mm -hmm. And so involving him in the, uh, the designing was quite interesting as well. And so I came up, I, I went back and forth to the numbers. It was really hard to tune in and tune out of, you know, whatever, what am I, what, what is the value, what is, what is too much, what is, what does God want for me, what is, you know, what do I want for them, what does he want for them, that the home is, you know, these are people with Alzheimer's and dementia, it's a beautiful thing that they're committing funds to them, to this sort of thing, right, to, to pretty up, basically, right, um, but it is functional too, it, I camouflage exit doors, so they, it becomes a, an issue where it's, um, they're, they're not seeing the, the door at the, as doors, they're seeing them as uh, a fireplace or whatever I've painted on the door. <clears throat> so anyway, so grappled a bit with the numbers, uh, went up and down and uh, ended up with a with the number. Actually, Elliot helped me with it. It's so Ooh. funny because <laughs> he'll say things to me now. He is so in tune, it's beautiful. Anyway, um, I finished the quote, sent it out, and, um, and I waited, and I waited. And there was crickets, and you know the fear started to rise up a little bit. Maybe I quoted too high, and so on. And then finally, I sent a message to say, just wanted to check that you received my my quote, okay? And she sent a message back pretty quickly then and said, "Yep, looks great." <laughs> and my quote was for nineteen thousand wow. dollars. So it was the biggest job I've ever gotten. Glory to God. I don't know what's with the 19, the 19,000, but um, interesting anyway that, wow. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, you know, a month of night, so nine, nine, nine thousand, nine thousand, then 19,000 for three months, and then 19,000 for one job, which will take me probably a month. <laughs> so, oh, wow. awesome. Yay! <laughs> God is so good. It's just, it's wonderful. I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> December the 3rd. We are in December, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. We are. We are. Mm -hmm. um, this hasn't got to do with the message today, but I, was, I read this one day this week. And uh, watch this. Way back from in Solomon's day, 
1 Kings 8, 54. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer in supplication unto the Lord, because it was a whole chapter of a prayer that he did, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. There it is again. The scriptural prayer posture. Okay? Not this. Can't find that anywhere in scripture. Okay? Not this. This. Right? Now, if you missed that link, ask for it. You know how to do that. Okay? All right. Because we already talked. We go right. We go to the scriptures about all that. Okay. Patrick, honey, you can come down and open us in prayer. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to Cecil. Come on. Lord, we thank you again for this morning. And once again, we we thank you for imparting the words of wisdom you've given to Dorothy and just give her clarity of mind and speech to to deliver it to us today and give us the open, open hearts and willing hearts and uh, open ears to hear what you have for us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So last week, <clears throat> we last week we talked about how everything that God created, he called good and very good. Okay, remember, you know, you checked that for me last week, yeah. right? And we also took the time to search our Bibles, you know, over there in Genesis 1, and we just could not find anywhere where God created cancer or heart disease, or mental torment of any kind, or any other horrible thing, correct? All he created in its entirety was good and very good. And cancer, or any other sickness or disease, are neither good nor very good in any way. Nothing about it in the slightest bit good, let alone very good. Okay? And I don't know about you, but I have about had enough of hearing God's own calling cancer some terrible, you know, accident or, or some horrible thing, a blessing in disguise. Right? It is not a blessing. In disguise or not in disguise, it's a curse. It's a curse. Yeah, it's, it, it, is, it is a flat-out curse, okay? It's not a blessing in disguise or otherwise, okay? <laughs> that just rhymed. Okay. This lying against the truth has got to stop, okay? And I am so glad that because of all that Jesus did, we can have victory over all that junk, okay? But you got to fight it. you got to resist it. With the word that God gave us, Okay, and with the faith that he made sure would come by the hearing of the word. Okay, mixing the two together, right? Faith and the word to get rid of the thing. Okay, and if you do think it's from God, again, like we talked about last week, why would you be trying to get rid of it then anyway? Right, because if God wants you to have it, you got to quit going to the doctor trying to get out of the will of God. Okay, do you know why people do that? Go to the doctor on Monday because they only believe that junk in church. That sickness is the will of God in church because as soon as they get out of the church doors, they head to the doctor to get rid of the condition. And so they should. Okay? God wants above all things that you prosper and be in health. So that ought to be just as important to you too. <clears throat> Okay? Besides, none of that truly sits right down on the inside of anybody anyway. Because it's not right. So if it's not from God, let's fight it. Let's rebel against it. Right? Use that fight back for something good and right for once. Right? And if you've got to, let's fight it with medicine. Let's fight it with what God has given us to fight with. And he has given us doctors and nutritionists and chiropractors and vitamins and healthy food options. He has, right? And he's first and foremost, though, given us his word. 
which is health medicine to all our flesh. Amen. We talked about that last week. There has been much confusion and wrong believing amongst God's own concerning healing. Okay. Concerning what God's will is on it. Concerning whether God put that thing on you or not. Concerning whether God is behind the bad stuff. Okay. And so we're going to find out, for, we're going to find out truth from in here. Okay. This week and maybe even over the next couple of weeks, right? We're going to see how the Lord leads, but on what he has to say about all this. And so last week we began and we established with no more room for question from God's word that he wants you well. Amen. Okay. That it is never his will that you be sick or hurting, or broke, right? Because it's not that way in heaven. So if it's not that way in heaven, it's not to be that way here for you here on the earth either. God wants you well and prosperous, and he's made provision for it. But we got to believe right, because we get from what we believe. Okay, again, if you missed last week's message, well, you know where he established all that, okay? Get it, okay? And you know how to do that? Request it, we'll send it to you. Okay, so we're going to keep going this week. Okay, and so what I need, um, what I've got to deliver to you over the next couple of weeks, the Lord wants taught in a certain order. Okay, so we're going to follow his lead. It's my job to take the time to teach you in such a way that God's truth on all this lands right, lands in your hearts right. Okay, because my Heavenly Father, he said that matters to him. Okay, and so you may have heard me explain this before, but I'm going to say it again. Ecclesiastes 11, wherever the tree falls, that's where it lays. My dad had a tree removal business for years, okay? And he would have to cut the tree in such a way that it fell where he wanted it to land. And so many times before he could get to the big tree, he had to take time to clear out some of the little trees so that the big one could land where it needed to, okay? So the big tree didn't get hung up or hindered from landing by the little trees. Okay, teaching truth is just that way. You gotta get it to land right. And often you've gotta clear some hindering things out of the way for that to happen. And then when the truth of God lands in your hearts right, it can be a help to you for the rest <coughs> of your life. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna cooperate with the Holy Spirit to get done, okay? So to get to the big tree, to get to the heart of the thing, we need to deal with some of the littler trees first. So that's what we're going to get to today. All right? So let's get to it. Okay. So go back with me in your Bibles because we looked at it at the end of last week. But go with me in your Bibles or your Bible phones to 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, if you will. Okay, so here, while you're looking it up, Peter is um, Peter's talking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and um, he's uh, he he's he's speaking <coughs> under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit about the letters that Paul has written. Okay, Peter is, and Peter refers to Paul as our beloved brother Paul in verse 15. So let's pick up at verse 16, verse 16 of Second Peter 3. As also in all his epistles, he's talking about Paul's letters, speaking in them of these things in which some things are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, means that word means wrestle, as they do also other scriptures unto their own destruction. The New King James, that was King James. New King James Version reads, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of scriptures. Amplified says it this way, which the untaught and unstable who have fallen into error twist and misinterpret just as they do the rest of scriptures to their own destruction. Okay. So here we have people who are wrestling with the scriptures and doing so to their own destruction. It is never a good idea 
to wrestle with scriptures. You will lose. Okay? People wrestling with the scriptures end up twisting and misinterpreting <coughs> them. And according to God, it ends in their own destruction. He'll know. Okay? Twisting and distortion and misinterpreting of scriptures. Been a whole lot of that going on over the years. Okay? God's own. Taking scripture and turning it and twisting it and making it say what they want it to say. Okay? And then acting like they have scripture for what they believe, but it was their own made up deal. Their own made up stuff. Okay? Just two days ago, I had somebody tell me that I had no business doing what I'm doing. That this, this was, a, that it was a disaster. And that, you know, didn't I know what the Bible said about women teaching and preaching? And that was only after the message on giving God your yes and your trust. Could you imagine if his ears heard the one on the pink cup? <laughs> oh, make that hair on the back of his neck stand up. Okay, but here's the thing. God in his goodness and mercy has allowed this man, whoever he is, right, to come across the August 6th word, word Sunday message. Okay, and so that day he had opportunity to hear what God went through all the effort to be sure he would hear Okay, to learn the importance of trusting God and how to walk by faith when a circumstance throws itself at you and get the victory. Okay, but all he could see was the pink cup. Right, and that he didn't want, you know, he didn't want answers for, it li for his life if it came from a pink cup. And so he would do without. God would go through all that effort and God would still let him choose. Not everyone gets the same because not everyone everybody chooses. chooses the same. Yeah. And he would still be without excuse, though, when he stand before, stood before God one day and would have to answer for his life. Okay? I didn't even know this person, right? I, I, I didn't do anything with it. I didn't bother to do anything with it, right? Because God was clear. God was clear when he said, don't give that which is holy to the dogs. And do not throw your pearls before pigs, mm -hmm. for they will trample them under their feet and tear you to pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay, Matthew 7, 6. Jesus isn't calling names, okay? He's not calling names. He's not being derogatory. He's simply saying that dogs and pigs have no ability to tell what is valuable, all right? They don't have the first clue about it, so don't expect them to. Okay? And simply put valuable things where valuable things belong. Okay? And it's not with those who have no ability to see the worth in something. Okay? But this is case in point. This is an all too common example of, you know, likely one of God's own who is unlearned and unstable, twisting scripture. And interestingly, though this fellow associated, you know, disaster with me, God said, it's these ones who do stuff like this, they do it to their own destruction. Okay? He may be saying, Dorothy, disaster. But God is saying, no, you. Destruction, bringing, being brought about on by and on your own. You're doing that. Okay? So, so many people going by the name of Christ and acting nothing like him. Wrestling with scriptures arguing with God as though they know better what he meant when he said something than he does. <clears throat> Twisting what God has written in here to fit what they may have believed all their lives and will not be told otherwise. Again, but God would let people choose. Okay? God's own. Making stuff up. Twisting and misinterpreting scripture. Acting, act, adding junk it does not say. Where healing is concerned too. Okay? Satan did it with Jesus in the wilderness. Right? I mean, he twisted scripture and tried to use it to his advantage. And to try and get it to say what it was not saying. And what he was saying was absolutely not what God was saying. Okay? Now, don't miss this. The devil does that. So when we do it, we're copying him. We're acting like him. All right? We're not to wrestle with scripture. 
We're not to twist it. God says we're to do something called rightly divide it. Okay? And the scriptures talk about rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Now you'll want to keep your marker here in 2 Peter. Okay? But let's go over now to 2 Timothy. Okay? 2 Timothy. We're going to be flipping back and forth between these two. 2 Timothy 2. I'm going to pick up at verse 15. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. says this. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? It says, it opens by saying study. Study what? The word of truth. Study this. This is where you find the answers. Right here. Study this. The Amplified says, Study and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully, correctly teaching the <laughs> word of truth. Okay? People that are unlearned and unstable wrestle with the scriptures. Question them. Add their own reasonings to them. What they feel makes sense. And they twist them hoping to make them say what they wanted to say. Many times in an attempt to get the scripture, scriptures to match up to their experience. Instead of getting their experience to match up to the scriptures. Okay? To justify stuff. right? What happened or what didn't happen for them. Okay? But to do that you're going to have to twist scripture. Okay? And here in 2 Timothy, here, God tells us that we need to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Well, Dorothy, that's nice, but how do you rightly divide a scripture with other scriptures? Okay. We've been learning that along the way. Okay? We now know that we are never to find a scripture we like, ignore the ones we don't, and build a doctrine around the one we like. Okay, no, we take the whole of God's word. That's what we're going to be doing over the next couple of Sundays. We take the whole of God's word because God will talk about it again. Right? We know that. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Study. Study the scriptures. This is where you will find the answers. It's with this that you rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. And where does one find answers to Bible questions? In the Bible. Okay. Dorothy, that's <laughs> profound. Right? You think? Right? Seems simple enough, but it is amazing how God's own will go everywhere else and to everyone else instead. What's your opinion on this portion of Scripture? I heard an expert say this, and I heard a preacher say that, and that theologian over there said such and such about it. And they will Google to see if there is some sermon preached somewhere, somebody out there addressing the thing they've been wondering about from in here, somebody addressing something they don't understand from in here. You know, Dorothy, a speaking message came up when I Googled the topic, and I heard this guy talking this. I don't know who he is, but... I mentioned something I was wondering about in the Bible to a friend, and they sent me a link that they found, and uh, that has got trouble written all over it, more often than not, okay? Because the problem is this. The devil has watched man for a long time, and especially since the internet, and he knows humans do this. And so he has made sure that there's lots available on the internet, available at your fingertips, right? To fill in the spaces that you don't have understanding on. And I assure you, he's not filling those spaces in with truth. He's not providing you with the truth. Okay? And then people get off. Way off. They get confused. They begin to stray from the truth that verse 18 of 2 Timothy 2 says will happen. We're going to talk about that. 
okay? And they get thrown off the faith they once had. Also verse 18. We'll talk more on that too, okay? Now understand, God brings ones into your life he wants you to learn from. He absolutely does, okay? And that's the point though. God brings them. And it's in our best interest that you did, it's in your best interest rather, that you do learn from them. Okay, and yes, still unwise to turn your nose up at the color of the cup. <laughs> Dumb move, right? Because if you won't take it from the cup God's serving it in, you're not getting any. Okay, bottom line. Okay, like for you example, you guys that are here, learning what you're learning for a reason. God got you here. But what have I told you time and time again? Okay, you don't ever just believe any old thing I say either. If it's not in here, clearly in here with scriptures don't you believe it now obviously again like i've always said you know i always pray i pray i never do that i have a covenant with the lord to so follow his lead that i don't do that okay and that's why i have a team that prays for me okay i myself too have ones that god has selected that i learn from Okay, and that, that doesn't mean that there aren't others out there that teach truth too, okay? But God has a reason for saying to me, I have chosen for you, Dorothy, to feed from here. So that's the table I'm going to sit at. And my father will have a reason. I trust him. <coughs> and so I do not endeavor to clean, glean from others outside of what God put on my table. <clears throat> it's so uncomplicated. Yeah. We complicate things. We get to all these reasonings that we allow to roll around in our heads. And it makes things harder than they need to be. And if the Lord has something come before me and says, I want you to read that. I want you to listen to this over here. And it's outside of where my normal feeding has come. Then I read it. Or I listen to it. Because the Father will have a reason for that too. It all comes down to... In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 6. Are you hearing me? Right? In all your ways. Okay? The internet stuff you got sent that God did not instruct you to read? That internet stuff you found because you Googled without God's permission? That stuff that's got twistings in it? That stuff which the untaught and unstable who have fallen into error have twisted it and misinterpreted and then made available on the internet. Do you know what you're to do with that stuff? Watch, I'm going to read that scripture over again. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Next verse. But shun profane and vain babblings because they will increase unto more ungodliness and their message will spread like cancer. God says, shun that stuff. Shun anything he did not instruct you to view or to hear. Refuse to read it. Refuse to hear it. Shun it. It's time we get to it. Okay? There's a whole lot of shunning been going on in Dorothyville these days. Right? Well, always has been. Ask Patrick. Patrick over the years is like, right? And he's going to get a medal in heaven. You survived being married to her. <laughs> what are you laughing for? <laughs> okay, well, here's the thing. I will not listen to that stuff. Right? I will not. I'm like, whoa, there's some stuff right there that needs some shunning, right? <clears throat> Contrary to the word that junk is. The result, you can't move me either. You can't get me wondering and wrestling with scripture. I will not do it. I will not move off being fully persuaded. You get to listening when you should be shunning and that junk you're listening to will lead to, increase to, further ungodliness, verse 16 says, when you're trying to grow in the other direction. I'm not having that. Right? God says shun that stuff. Have nothing to do with it. 
right? It'll move you over to further ungodliness, not godliness. But does, God doesn't stop there in his warning about this kind of stuff either. Next verse, verse 17, and their message will spread like cancer, the New King James says. Amplify says it this way, and their teaching will spread like gangrene. Do you think God's just being a little overdramatic? No. No, I've watched it. I've had people sit right here in these word classes. One day find some godless thing on the internet, refuting what's in scripture, and that person, it didn't matter what I showed to them from that point on, right in the word, their believing already had been altered that fast. Wow. And they walked away just like that. Mm. Like gangrene. Oh, it spread fast in that person's life. Teaching wrong stuff, arguments, and reasonings. Well, I just think that in this verse, God really means something else. Wrestling with the word and the twisting of scripture will get inside you and eat away. Destroy, spread like gangrene. And God, through Paul, calls that junk spiritual cancers. God's serious about that stuff. So many of God's own, they call like what I'm talking about here. Oh, Dorothy, God is a God of love. God understands that I'm a thinker and that I need to research on my own. And the, and the internet is available. It's an available tool for me to do that. It doesn't want me bogged down with all that heavy stuff you're talking about right now. And they won't hear it. Okay, but they'll go on ahead and clap and sing that song in church. You know, I am a friend of God, right? And you're going, are you? Would God agree with you? Or will he remind you that you spent most of your time doing your own thing and acting like you asked him? Would he have to remind you that by the choices you make, and the stuff you say about him and believe him capable of, pin on him that you act more like an enemy. No, God has got another measuring stick for that altogether. And he was clear when he had Jesus speak these words. He said this, John 15, 14. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. You are not my friend if you pick and choose from what I command you. You are not my friend if you wrestle with my word and argue with it. Twist it to suit you. I don't care how joyfully you sing, I am a friend of God in church and how impressive it looks. You are not my friend if you pretend to don't, to that you don't hear what I commanded you and then turn on the tears and play the didn't know card later. Okay. You are not my friend if you do most things I command you. Only one group qualifies as a friend of God, as a friend of the master. Those who do whatever he tells them. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. And Paul goes on to say, that these vain and profane babblings, babblings that are like a cancer are going to go on and effectively overthrow the faith of some. Which means they had some faith until they heard that junk. Junk coming from the unlearned and the unstable. That's what we're trying to teach the kids. They're going to hear stuff. They're going to hear stuff from unsaved mommies, daddies, cousins, friends at school. To just right away just go, that's not what God says. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. To right away make a stand in their hearts. No, no, no. I don't believe that. I'm not having those words go down on the inside. No, I don't believe that. Amen. Okay? So junk coming from the unlearned and the unstable. Having a Bible college degree does not make you learned. Does not make you stable does not make you one who's even got the spiritual goods at all. Does not guarantee that what you're saying does not fall into the junk that needs shunning category. Does not mean you can lead anybody because you, you are unlearned and unstable yourself. 
you do know that being unlearned and unstable does not seem to keep people from teaching the Bible or leading large groups of God's people. So don't go by that. God will show you who you can listen to and who you can't. Okay? Because he knows exactly who's learned and unlearned. Who's stable or unstable. And he's fully ready and willing to assist you in taking heed what you hear. Okay? No, when I need to know an answer from the Bible, something that God says about something that God said, I go to the Bible. I go to the Lord, to my heavenly dad, and ask him, because he'll be right. Okay? Look, from a child, I have watched um, adult after adult speak things, you know, in my home, outside my home, in the church, in the school, Christian schools even, okay? At university, speak things and tell me things, teach things, earnestly even, that have not been right. And it just wouldn't sit right down on the inside of me. And I didn't always know why or what to do about it. Okay? But I always knew my heavenly dad did. <laughs> I always knew he would know. He was not wondering, so I'd ask him. Right? And he always knew he was never wrong once. People talking like they know. And they're wrong. But they're sure they're right. Just something as simple, you know, when I would sit, I remember as I was, you know, doing this message, I was remembering how sitting in psych classes in, at Laurier and listening to the professor and the big fat textbook, right? Tell me how to handle deviant behavior. And uh, that clearly, clearly didn't work where I did, right? And uh, so I just wanted to bring that professor in, along with his textbook over to the secure facility that I worked at. And I put him in a room with one of the juveniles doing time, right? And try that out try all that textbook stuff out, right? We'd have to pull them out, right? That nonsense would get them beat up. And um, I never could understand as I sat in meetings with, you know, social workers and probation officers and all these degreed people, like I can remember it right now so vividly. I can picture with each one of them were sitting around this big boardroom-ish table for important people, you know, and then there's me, right? And all these degreed people, nice people, good people, right? Like friendly people, some saved even. And um, we, we would have to gather because we were attempting to come up with what we call the plan of care for the person, the particular juvenile that was assigned to me, okay? And so I would just sit quietly and, and watch as, you know, all these important people talked, right? But talk total nonsense among themselves, like with straight faces, grown-ups, right? And I'm thinking, surely they're not serious, are they? Right? As though any of that is going to be any good to this kid. Don't they know this kid? Because the kid would tell me, okay, like, so I would be one of the security that had to assist in escorting the kid, you know, from the facility to court, okay? And uh, so this kid would become vulnerable for a bit, okay? Now, I say kid, 15, 16 years old. And so he'd tell me, he'd tell me, he goes, I don't even want out. He didn't want out of prison. He goes, I don't even want out. Mm -hmm. He was treated better, right, and provided more for inside than out, and he'd tell me that the consequences for his actions would be such and such. Instead, he'd never do it again because it wouldn't be worth it. Oh, but my heavenly dad, I know he'd know that stuff, right? The guy spent well with the textbooks, right? They did, and their meetings based on stuff in those textbooks. But my heavenly father knew what that boy needed, right? But what baffled me is how much they talked like they knew. Like, I wasn't going to interrupt as a 20-year-old kid. I mean, what did I know? right? All I did was I just, I'm thinking to myself and going, well, y'all do what you have to do, but I had no plans to chase that kid when he went AWOL on an outing that he had worked his points up to earning. I'm not going to chase him and tackle him down and haul him back to the, to the facility, right? He was only doing it anyways to get a new sentence so he could get sentenced back to the facility. I'm not chasing him down and tackling him to, you know, anyways, guys who would be, you know, and those were the days. Guys would be freaking out in their locked and secure rooms. And the male staff would come and get me. And they say, okay, Dorothy, so we're going to send you in. And I'm like, how do, how do I get this 
job? Where's that guy with the textbook? Get the guy, you know the one, you know the one that we get training for what to do, you know, when kids de-escalate and how to de-escalate this out of control kid who's destroying everything in his room that isn't nailed down, made of concrete or stone, stone board. Yeah, that guy. Get that guy with the textbook, put him in there. And they're like, put you in there, right? And they're like, well, Dorothy, you will have a calming effect. And here's the thing. That's not in the textbook, but it is a thing. And I knew it was true. There was wisdom that regular staff had that wasn't in the textbook, right? So in the room I go, right? Do you see, Al? That's why I pick on you, right? It's a result of past trauma. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So many people every day talking like they know stuff. Okay, but just because somebody talks so confidently and convincingly does not mean they know or are speaking the truth. That they aren't leading you right down the garden path. Even well-meaning perhaps because they are led down the same garden path, which is why they're on it to lead you down it. Okay, it was funny when we first met Rosie. I already warned Rosie I was going to tell the story. She goes, please clarify then, if you're going to tell this, that that's not me anymore. Uh. <laughs> so her dad, she said growing up, her dad just always taught them, look, you can say absolutely anything. If you say it convincingly and sure, like you know what, people will believe anything you say. And so we'd be, you know, driving somewhere or whatever, and she'd be talking emphatically about something, and I'd go, are you doing that thing with me? Yeah. Are you doing that thing with me? Because if you are, I will slap you myself. If you don't know, just say you don't know. Right? But it's a thing, right? To, you hear it, you watch. I've watched countless people over the TV set and computer screens over these last few years talk outright lies. And I don't mean little ones. I mean big, fat, glaring ones. Ones that you only have to have a part of an eye in your head to see. Right? And with a total straight face. Right? You've seen it too. I can see all your nodding heads. Right? Media. People in places of influence. Ones in positions of power and leadership in our nation and in the nations of the world. It's disgusting. For some of them, it's gotten to the point where they have been given over to their lies. And they actually believe them now. That's why their face is straight. And they can talk that junk without even blinking. And if you do not have discernment, you won't know what's the truth. Especially in this hour. All the people of God across the globe have needed to learn to hear God accurately a long time ago. And to do what they're told without questioning God a long time ago. Right? Now some are having to learn it while they're in the thick of it on this planet. Okay, And I said some, because amazingly, many will still refuse to learn it now. What a spot to be in. To choose to be in. Alright. People can lead you astray. But you know, you know who will never lead you astray? Your Heavenly Father, Amen. the Holy Spirit, yeah. the Master, Jesus, and His Word right here. Amen. So when I need to know something, I don't go bother ask, go ask anybody else. I go to my Heavenly Father, okay? Because I want to know what He says about it. Because then that's going to be my opinion, my opinion and my position on the thing too. Whether I understand it yet or not. Okay? My heart is always, you know, it's like my father and I have this understanding. It's like my, I have a default button. My default button is, look, I don't believe any of it unless my father tells me I can. So I'll get back to you on that. Okay? There have been times that I believed something right when I heard it and I didn't check with the Lord and ran with whatever it was, right, to find out it was wrong. Right? I did that just recently. I sent Ingrid something. I go, I was going to note this and I passed it on to her to find out it was actually not quite yeah. All that it changed this, it changed the thing, the story, mm -hmm. and so now I got to repent, backpedal, and fix it, and hope my feeling foolishness didn't do damage. Right? <laughs> hey, check with the Lord about everything. We got to get like that in this hour. Yeah. That is living life furthest from the fence. Okay, 
Karen, you can grab the kids. Let them know. 2 Timothy 2.15. Again, <coughs> study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you can rightly divide the word, then it's possible to wrongly divide it. <clears throat> to make the scripture say almost anything, right? Just pull a few words from here and a few words from there and you can invent stuff. Okay? Why am I talking about all this? Because people have done this in the area of healing too. Taking scriptures and twisting them and misinterpreting them. Okay? And there can be scriptures that appear to say something, but we must rightly divide. And we're going to get more into that next week. Okay, So let's go back over to 2 Peter 3. Okay, Let me read that again because there's more you need to see there. 2 Peter 3. As also in all his as also in all his epistles, Peter says concerning Paul's letters, speaking them in them of these things which in which some are hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people rest or wrestle, King James reads, twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of scriptures. Verse 17. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand. Beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. So here Peter is speaking of those who were once steadfast, <coughs> but they got listening to the wrong things. The reasonings of others, people who were arguing about the scriptures, twisting and misinterpreting them. People have died that way because they listen to the misinterpreting of scripture where healing is concerned. Mm -hmm. When it never had to be that way. Mm -hmm. Ones who, who went from being settled in their believing of scripture and what God said, and now they're back to wondering about it. They're not sure. Somebody, something has talked them out of it. Okay? And so they ended up being led away with the same error. Okay? We're once steadfast and are now wondering about it, aren't sure about it, no longer fully persuaded. And here's the problem. When you're unsure, you can't be in faith about it. Do you see the strategy of the devil? Yeah. All he has to do is get you to wondering. Yeah. Okay? Because in faith, when you're in faith about something, Bible faith, not strong hope so, it's got to do with being fully persuaded. But now you're not. And you're no longer fully persuaded and you're back to wondering. Okay, let me read this scripture in Romans 4. It says, He, speaking of Abraham, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded... <laughs> That what he, God, had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Romans 4, 20 to 22. Fully persuaded has everything to do with being strong in faith. Not fully persuaded means you're back to wavering. And let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1, 7 and 8. Mm. Are you seeing how costly this is? And the devil knows it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listening to the wrong things. Listening to the unlearned and unstable. Listening to all the voices of people around you saying, well, I think the scripture means this there. Well, no, I think it means this. Well, I heard this person say this about that you got to be careful who you listen to. you got to be careful what you're listening to because it can pull you from your steadfastness and make you unstable and lead you away with the same error, get you back to wavering, no longer fully persuaded. And that's a real problem if you're believing for healing. 
especially if the doctors can't do anything anymore. They've run to the end of what they can do. And that's exactly what so much of the junk on the internet is for. Demonic strategy. Okay. People will Google a Bible topic that they have a question about instead of asking the Lord and waiting for him to explain it. Okay. And then they get to listening to something instead that's got mixture in it. Scripture twisted to support what the person's trying to say, whether knowingly or intentionally, right? Um, or, or whether they've been, they may have been deceived on it themselves. Okay? And now there's questions. There's a seed of confusion in the hearer's heart. And then that warning goes on in Scripture to say, lest you beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. This is not funny, right? I will not consult Google for spiritual questions that I have. Because Google will pull up links for you with, spirit, with speakers on the topic, all right? Okay? You, we got to cut that out. We stop doing that. Well, I know that the Bible says such and such, and I believe that I do, but I saw online, mm -hmm. uh, but online, this was the person, there was this person who said, I cringe when I hear people talk like that. God warned about it in 2 Peter 3, right? And when he, and when that, when you hear that, people talking like that, you realize 2 Peter 3 has been kicked into operation in that person's life. I do not let just anything into my ears. There are things that I get sent and am requested to listen to. You've heard me say this before. To let a person know if it's scriptural or not or whatever. Unless the Lord gives me specific direction to do that, to even look at it, I won't do even that. Because I'm in charge of what I let in these ears of mine. And I intend to guard my heart with all diligence. Okay? Because there is so much demonically inspired and deceptive teaching out there that is trying to pass off as God and is effectively leading people away into error because of the twisting of scripture that's being done. I'm not letting that in my ears. I'm not having that. Not because I'm concerned that the scriptures or, you know, the truth of God's word in me can't stand up on its own and hold its own. No, but because I refuse to be defiled by it. God said, guard your heart with all diligence in Proverbs 4. He said that for a reason. And though I have nothing to hide or nothing to fear, I do have everything to protect. The more you stay pure in those things, the more the wrong things will stand out and be disgusting to you. Verse 18, next verse. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Okay, so let me read it all together. As also... In all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which some are hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of scriptures. Okay, so the Lord lets us know that those who twist, twist scripture in some areas, heads up, they do it in more areas. As they do also the rest of scriptures, that verse says. Well, you have to really. Okay, because God talks about the thing over and over again through the word. So then those same ones need to be, things need to be twisted over and over throughout the word. And all the scriptures supporting those ones that they're twisting have to be twisted as well to keep that doctrine securely in place. Okay, you therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, now you know. Beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but, meaning, but instead, stay away from that junk. Dorothy translation, keep far from twisting that hangs around that wrong side of the fence. Okay, that hangs around around that fence, anywhere near that fence. 
but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Meaning, stay way over here where the pure, unaltered Word of God is. Grow in that. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Right? That's going to bring great glory to Him. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Let's just, let's pray. Because, I mean, how many times, you know, let's just ask the Lord for all the times, just not knowing we have gone and listened to something mm -hmm. or entertained something or reasoned something or Googled something. We had no business Googling and then got to hearing something. Let's just ask him to cleanse us of all that stuff that we should have shunned, that we didn't shun, didn't know to shun. But that's the thing about the blood. <laughs> he can wash. Jesus' blood can yeah. wash through us from the top of us yeah. all the way down yeah. and remove every trace of defilement as we repent of it. Amen? Yeah. So let's do that. Okay, so just repeat after me. Father, Father I've learned some things from your word. I've done some of that stuff. I know now. I confess to you. I confess to you. Anytime I've done it. Anytime. When I've received something, when I, received something I should have shunned. shunned. When I shunned something, when I, shunned something I should have received. I, received. I, repent. I repent. And you said, and you said if, I sin, if I confess my sin, you're faithful and just, faithful and just to, forgive me to forgive me. And to cleanse me. From all unrighteousness. So I ask the blood of Jesus now. Wash through me. Spirit. Soul. And body. From the top of my head. To the tips of my toes. Wash through all the files in my memory. From junk I allowed in there. And cleanse me. And make me pure. And I commit from this point on. I'm going to check with you. Find out what I'm to shun. And what I'm to receive. And I'm going to do exactly that. With your help. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Was that a help? Yeah, it's going to help us because yeah. we're going to need to, as we're learning these things, we're going to learn to what to shut out because there is a, God is, there's a remnant on the earth that God needs pure believing, <coughs> pure believing lined up with his word. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we want to be those people. Mm -hmm. We want to be those that God can, God can trust with all these things. Mm -hmm. Amen.